John chapter 12. Y'all give the band a hand. Would you do that? I like, I like. Amen. Did a great, great. It's good this morning. Very good. Appreciate the worship. Appreciate what's going to happen next Sunday as we introduce our new worship leader. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I know. You think? I told the band last night who it was, and they got so excited. It's going to be good. It's a God thing. Sometimes waiting on the Lord is the best thing you can do. We almost rushed in too quick, and uh, God had other plans. So uh, I'm just, I'm elated, and uh, I just love keeping you in suspense. John chapter 12. He was 33 years old and on his way to what he knew would be the cup, the cross, the hardest night of history. And he walked into his, you know, if you know that you're leaving this world, you want to hang out with the people who love you. You've often heard me say, uh, I like that person. I love that person because they love me. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a weakness all of us have. We love people who love us. It's hard to love people that don't like you, isn't it? And the enemies, they're not your friends, and you, you get affected by them. And by the way, I wasn't blind to what happened this week. I did see, I happened to go into a home that had the, uh, uh, the debate, if that's what you want to call it. And I, and, I, and I was talking to my pastor this morning about it. He said, you know, our country looks like the prisoners are running the prison. I mean, it's like it, they've turned, it, it's the most ludicrous thing I've ever seen to be the greatest nation on earth. And this is what we've got coming up. And I say that for either one of them. You know, we should be, I could, I could pick two out of this room that could be president better. I just could, you know. I'd probably start with HD. <laughs> uh, I, mean, he, he knew, I mean, at least he can keep a sentence going. <laughs> oh, man, I just, I just, and I'm saying for either one of them. The other one, you know, the other one, he's, he, Trump's hilarious. You know, I've got 34 felony accounts. No one else has ever got 34. I got 34. I just, uh, <laughs> it's just, it's crazy. We're in a crazy time. It's crazy. So Jesus got to show up soon, yeah. hopefully by November. <laughs> Amen. I know some of you think, well, you're picking on my press. I pick on them, man. They, ought, they deserve to be picked on just a little bit. And they can handle it. Amen. I just know, I, I just thought I could be Biden in golf, and now I found I, I can't. It's a mess. Uh, you got John 12, give me time to find it. Just letting you know I'm not ignorant to what's going on in the world. John chapter 12. Six days. I see the word six days. I want to I wanna sing. Six days on the road. Yes. A lot of things can happen in six days. Six days before Passover, before communion. Jesus entered Bethany, where Lazarus, so recently raised from the dead, was living. He raised him. Lazarus and his sisters invited Jesus to dinner at their home. There's nothing like an invitation to be invited. Uh, this week, while I was on the road, I was invited to meals, and it's a precious thing. Martha served. You knew that, didn't you? And what Martha's do. Lazarus, one of those sitting at the table with them. All 12 disciples there with Jesus. Then, somewhere between them and then, there's a gap. There's eating, there's laughter, there's those moments of telling stories at the table. There's look what the Lord has done talking of the miracles somewhere between them and then all this was taking place mary slipped out of the room somewhere between them and then and she retrieved something from her room in which would 
carry with it over a year's wages, something she had been saving up for the them and then moment. And then she walked in with about a pint, a pound, 16 ounces of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. One translation says she massaged his feet. The house was filled with fragrance of the perfume. She, she, bro she broke it, but it wasn't, on, uh, it wasn't an accident. She didn't spill it. She poured it. She made sure that it went over his feet, amen, and then with her hair, she wiped it. Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, even then getting ready, already set a plan in motion to betray Jesus, said, why wasn't this oil, this perfume, sold and the money given to the poor? I stop here because to question Jesus publicly was an abuse of a relationship. To question him and almost rebuke him publicly. You want to rebuke a leader or say something to a leader, take it privately. Don't do it publicly. He did it publicly in this place. and He said it would have easily brought 300 silver pieces. He calculated very quickly the price of the perfume. He said this not because he cared two cents about the poor, but because he was a thief. <clears throat> her doing that exposed her heart and his heart. When she gave, it exposed her heart. When she gave, it exposed his heart. I want you to pay attention to that. Your giving sometimes exposes other people's hearts. They think, why didn't why did you give that to the church? Why did you give that to uh, a mission? Why did you give that to uh, this group? When we family, you should have gave that to me. It exposed the heart. Hmm. Jesus said, leave her alone. Leave her alone. She's anticipating and honoring the day of my death, my burial. You always have the poor with you. You don't always have me. Now, when I read this, I'm thinking, she knew also, because uh, Jesus said it to the disciples in three days, you put me down in three days, I'm coming back. But even though she knew that, she could have saved a whole lot of money by not giving it to him right then. But she did it as a, a memory, as a memorial. Do you know how powerful memories are? How powerful memorials are to give up something at a moment? And this Mary, she's a consummate worshiper. I know, and it seems like mainly among uh, uh, the women, they, they're worshipers. They, they love to worship. They love to give their worship. And this woman, Mary, she couldn't help herself. She was all about worship. Amen. Well, there's times in Scripture we see her during, I call it sunshine, when everything is going well. Amen. And she's fellowshipping in the good times. You know the story in Luke chapter 10, verse 38. Jesus goes into the same house. And he's there with, with Peter and James, John, all the rest of them. He's got Lazarus is there, and, and Martha's in the kitchen cooking, and Mary's there. Uh, she's at his feet, and at that moment at his feet, she's listening to the stories. Martha gets mad, comes in. You know the story. She's got a rolling pin in her hand. She's upset. She's mad. And when she comes in, she says, Jesus, don't you care about me that you've left Mary to serve, uh, to, to not allowed to serve with me? And Jesus said those two words. What were those words? Martha. Mm -hmm. Why did he say it? To calm the woman down. You don't calm the woman down, she'll kill you. The only place in the Bible where he says a one, somebody's name twice. He did it because that way we could all wear little crosses around our necks instead of rolling pins. Can I get an amen? amen. So you see her there in the sunshine. You see her during sorrow. Lazarus had died. In this story, amen, here in John 12, we see Lazarus sitting at the table. But there was a time that he died. And during his death, Jesus showed up late. He's late for the funeral. He's late for the burial. He's missed the supper after the funeral. He's missed all of that. And when he shows up, he says to them, he's sleeping. And he calls him out of the grave. During this time, during this time of sorrow, she's at his feet. If you can learn to fellowship with Jesus in the good times, you can fellowship with him in the bad times. A lot of folk only hang out with him when times are rough. Amen. But she knew 
during sunshine, I can hang out with him. And also during sorrow, can, I can hang out with him. And now the third time we see that she's connected with him is fellowship in the sad times. It's preparation for his burial. She expressed herself. Everybody say, express yourself. You got to express yourself. There are times when you love something, you just got to express yourself. I do it all the time. There are things that you'll know what I love by being around me. I'm just going to express myself. I can't help it. When I come to church, I got to tell Jesus, I love you. I appreciate you. You were with me on the curves and the storms and the rain. It was 42 degrees when I left Colorado. I had to run the heater on my seat and steering wheel. It was 102 when I got back to South Texas. Some of you can't drive 60 degrees. <laughs> I drove 60 degrees in one day. Amen. It shifted and changed. But I'm going to tell you all through that, I just, it was like I'm meditating on legacy. What, what am I leaving behind? What will I leave behind? Will it be a bad taste in the mouth of people or will it be a joy in their heart? You have an opportunity like her to leave your destiny a legacy that when you leave this world make sure somebody knows i was mentioned to a family back here in the back i, I love drag racing i love quarter uh, eighth of a mile racing i've always loved the, the the outlaws on tv that's been on for years there was a young lady named lizzie musi she's 33 years old passed away this week stage four breast cancer 33 years old i've doubled her lifetime almost and I said, I think about it, 33 is so young. But before she died, the last year of her life, she gave glory to God. And she let everybody know, I love God. And if this is my destiny, let it be that way. But I'm going to serve him till I go. In life, many times we, we, we forget that we matter. And what we've done here matters. And Mary wanted to make sure that with 16 ounces, a pound of of the a year's wages of perfume she poured it over the body of christ and she wanted to and she wasn't embarrassed sometimes you got to express yourself well people will see it i've seen some of you at ball games act like fools <laughs> forgive the word if it offends you but what you did offended me because you were rooting for a team i didn't like you got to express yourself. Can I get an amen? amen? And that's what she did. She began to express. She, you know, listen, there's a song that said, if loving him is wrong, I don't want to be right. Amen. Mary came in with a jar of very expensive Aramaic oils, anointed, massaged Jesus' feet, wiped them with her hair. Amen. The fragrance of the oil filled the house. Not only did the worship, and that's what it was. It was worship that filled the house. The fragrance filled the house. Amen. Not only that, we see that she had it on her too. It was on him. It was on her. Mary had an extravagant devotion. I love this. She was a giver. Mary didn't use the perfume on her brother Lazarus. That couldn't have been an offense. It should have been used for him. I mean, here he's raised from the dead, and he's already heard the word Lazarus the stinker. All he's heard is he stunk when he come out of the grave. Of course you stunk. Death stinks. How do you cover stink? You got to put perfume on it. Many of you knew that this morning. <laughs> you covered yourself. You looked after yourself. But here at this moment, Lazarus has been dead. He's sitting there and he, she comes out with what should have been on him. I'm your bro. And you didn't put it on me. But he wasn't upset. He wasn't, hey, why would you be? You've been resurrected. Amen. You smell good again. Can you get an amen? Yeah. Amen. Mary's devotion, it lingered. Expensive. Amen. If a little goes a long way, then a lot stays. She was unafraid of other people's opinions against Jewish tradition. She's not, a, she's not even supposed to be in the room with all them men in there eating. And yet she breaks in between then and whatever that word was. Then and them. I like that. I, I, that just came to me while I was preaching. That's just not, that's good anointing there. I'll remember that in the next service and act like it was always there. <laughs> then and them. She breaks in. She's not supposed to be there. And she lets her hair. She, you know, in other words, I don't care about your opinion. Your opinion don't move me when it comes to worshiping God. Your opinion don't move me when it comes to giving to God. Your opinion don't, don't change who I am. It's about him and me. Between then and them, <laughs> she gave her legacy destiny. Givers always leave a legacy. 
They always leave a legacy, something to remind people they mattered. We will exit this place. And when we exit, will it matter that we were here? Your hugs matter. Your care for one another matter. Your kind words matter. What you did while you were here. What other people call, they called it waste. You wasted it. You broke it. You can't get it back in the bottle. You wasted it. Now, now listen, that's waste. You may call it waste. Jesus called it worship. What you did this morning was not wasteful. It was worship. Amen. It mattered. Jesus defended her devotion on purity of motive. She wasn't self-seeking. She wasn't, hey, look at me. Amen. It was the urgency of the moment. She knew it was for his burial. She knew that he was leaving. But Judas, Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, even then getting ready to betray him. Why wasn't this oil sold? We could have made a hundred pieces of silver. He said not because he cared about that, but because he was in charge of the common funds, because he was a thief. And Jesus said, let her alone. Leave that woman alone. That word spikenard uh, is another word for the, the perfume. Tr it means trustworthy, genuine, pure, very costly, extremely. Your worship is valuable, especially when it's from a broken heart. Especially when something is breaking your heart right now and you still tell God, I love you. Job lost, and when he had everything, Job worshiped. When Job lost everything, he worshiped. Yeah. There's something about just worshiping God no matter what the circumstance, circumstance don't matter. He's still God. So I worship him. Leave her alone. Amen. Her worship filled the house. You couldn't, you could, it, it was, the aroma was there. Everybody knew it. Jesus, so those words literally mean stay away from her. I want you to stay away from her, Judas. You're, 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 you're contaminated with thievery. You're contaminated with evil. Amen. You stay away from her. I'm going to deal with you later, Judas. Amen. And he did. Jesus will always speak up for the generous. In, in Luke chapter 19, and I'm not going to read this to you. I talked to you about it uh, last week. But there was a young guy named Zacchaeus who climbed a tree. He was in the IRS. He was a tax collector, and the people hated him. And while Jesus sat with him, he said, I'm going to give four, four times everything that I've got back to the poor. Amen. I'm going to bless others. He defends givers. He defends people who want to break boxes and alabaster boxes and, 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 and love and to give worship. But Judas, Judas, John chapter 12, verse 4 says, Then Judas, one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pieces, amen, and given to the poor? He said it because he was a thief. Judas represents the complainers. In life, they're givers and they're takers. He was a taker, always objecting, upset over this, always expressing their opinion about how things should be. Listen, people who always complain will ultimately forsake. If you always complain, I'm pastor now for 31 years. I can tell you when com people start complaining about things, Pastor does, they won't be long. They'll, they'll start leaving. Amen. Because they won't, all, they, it's too cold in here. It's too hot in here. I don't like the pews. I don't either. But I'm still here. <laughs> and they may stay here longer than me. Who knows? But the bottom line is people complain about stuff. I don't like the children's church. I don't like the this. I don't like that. You know, listen. Just whatever it is, take it. I always go back to Scripture and realize they didn't have it all either. They, what they had was a love for God and one another. And that was enough to have church in. Amen. If, if it's under a tent, that's, that's enough to have church in. Amen. Wherever I'm at, I'm not going to complain because I don't want to leave this. I love him. Judas was not only frustrated with her, he was frustrated with Jesus. Amen. There will always be people with an opinion about your generosity and giving. Judas, uh, Judas will self-destruct. In Acts, the Bible tells us, chapter 1, Judas, which was a guide to them that took Jesus, for he was numbered with us he, and had obtained a part of this ministry. He was a part of the ministry. He cast out devils. Jesus mentioned his name was written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Verse 18 says, now this man purchased the field. I challenged before I left uh, to go on this, this uh, to take my grandkids back. I was with the staff and I challenged them. What do you do with a Judas? What do you do? Your theology. What do you do with a Judas? Was Judas born to go to hell? I don't think so. Did he have a will like us to, to decide yes or no? I believe so. Amen. And yet I'm reading scripture and it says, Now this man purchased the field with the reward of iniquity, the 30 pieces of silver. He wanted silver. He got silver. He wanted to trade this for 300 pieces of silver. 
He couldn't do it, but he took a tithe off of it. He took 10% off of it, and he got 30 pieces of silver. Amen. And he threw it back into the temple when he realized that Jesus had been crucified. And falling headlong, he hung himself. Falling headlong, he burst asunder in the mist, and all his bowels gushed out. That was his ending. That's how he ended in life. There's nothing more threatening to the enemy than your ability to release and give. Mary's testimony was she gave. We are all responsible for our responses in our daily encounters with Jesus and each other. So I want to remind you as I close. <laughs> remind yourself that like Lazarus, you've been resurrected. Come on. God resurrected you. When you got born again, you got resurrected. Amen. When you've gone through hell, you got resurrected. Amen. He brought you back. You were resurrected to serve like Martha. I showed up on the property. I've been gone for four days. I showed up on the property Saturday. It had all been mowed. Everything. It had been taken care of around. The, and, and I got word this was taken care of. Somebody's in the hospital. It's, it's such a good thing to know that we serve like Martha. Amen. We serve. But we worship like Mary. We worship like Mary. We remind ourselves that this could be our last Sunday together. Even we don't know how life is going to go. So when we come together, we love to be together. We're grateful in life. But listen to me. There lurks an ungrateful Judas in all of us that has to be dealt with. We fight it. We try to hold on to it. We try to store it up. Amen. But the truth of the matter is we got to release it and let it go. i got to let this go. Generosity will always produce prosperity in your life. It, it, and when I say prosperity, it doesn't mean that you're going to you become wealthy, rich, as in finances. You can be wealthy in favor. Yeah. You can be wealthy in friendship. We give our legacy destiny. Amen. I'm blessed to be. I cannot be a blessing unless I'm blessed. I got to get blessed first. Amen. I'm blessed because I choose to release whatever I've got in my worship to him. To love him. Luke 6 says, given it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. People are given to your bosom for the same measure that you meet out. Whatever shovel you use to, to give with, you're going to get it back. Acts 20, Jesus, Paul mentioned about Jesus. He said, or, or Luke, the writer of Acts, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring, you ought to support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus, it's more blessed to give than to get. Some of you have a hard time receiving. I pray God helps you break through. Allow other people to bless you. Amen. To pour into you. Ecclesiastes 11.6 says, Sow your seed in the morning and at evening let not your hands be idle. In other words, sow seed and keep working. For you do not know which will succeed. Whether this or that. Or whether both will do it. Amen. See, I've heard people talk about and I'm a tither. I, I calculated in my mind over 40 years of serving God, I've probably given close to three quarters of a million dollars back to the church in just my tithing. That's what I figure. It's just, but it's been in increments over the years. And somebody would say, well, Pastor, you could have used that. Your family could have used that. Yeah. They can also go to work. See, in my life, the house matters. Missions matters. Taking care of our ministry matters. All this matters to me. So I continue to do it and will continue to do it. But I believe Jesus was a tither because that's what he was taught as a young boy, to be a tither. He gave of himself and he gave of what he had. He never rebuked people for tithing. He just rebuked them for showing off with it. Don't show off with it. Just be a giver. So when I have an opportunity to give my destiny legacy, I'm going to do it. And when you come to this house, you have influence, worship, break a vase, give me my flowers now. Don't wait till I'm dead to bring flowers to this church and say, I sure love my pastor. I paid $150 for that little bit of roses up there to let everybody know I love my pastor. Somebody slipped me a case knife on Father's Day. I said, thank you, Jesus. They gave me my flowers now. 
People come into my house, they see my knife collection. I say, pick you one. Get you one. Little boys walking around one of pastor's knives now. Amen. Don't come to my house because I said that, okay? I'm just telling you this stuff I've done. I give, give, give. I open my gun case. And I say, I like that gun. Take that gun. That's your gun. My grandson said, can I have that gun? No, you can't have that gun. You get it later. Know when to give. But there are people in your life you need to give your flowers to now. Don't wait till they're gone. Love them now. Look after them now. Leave a legacy now. Don't wait on it. Don't wait. I, I pray, I pray that when I'm dead, that there ain't no flowers in this house for me. That somebody will give me my flowers now. You're welcome. You're beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. Give me my flowers. Now, don't wait. Don't wait. You can keep them. You ain't even got to water them. They'll never die. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Love of Jesus, flow over your people. Remind us that we've got to leave a legacy. We've got to release ourselves into this world. That what we've done here will matter there. That it mattered what Mary did. We still talk about it today. Judas, we see him try to manifest himself in us. But the truth of the matter is, <laughs> we want the Marys to come forth. We want the worship to come forth. If you've been away from God, put your hand up. Ain't nobody looking around. It's me and God. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Who else? Thank you, sir. Amen. You can, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Who else? Just lift your hand. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let's pray this together. Lord Jesus, forgive me for my attitude. Forgive me for being like Judas, trying to hold on to it. Help me release. Release. Let go. Give people their flowers now. Bless them now. Do something extravagant for the kingdom of God. We love you, Jesus. Forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give God a praise in this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you. If I get our servant leaders to come up. We've had communion. We've had prayer. We've repented. Amen. Some of you, as I was preaching, you, you just thought immediately, I need to do something for someone. And if you wait too long, you'll forget it or you won't do it. Give somebody their flowers now. Be kind to somebody now. Leave a memory to someone. You matter. I called my friend Tommy Balky this week. I just want to talk with Tommy. He's one of my advisors, and he's got a really good business. And it was about 3 o'clock at 2.30 in the afternoon. When he answered the phone, he said, good morning. I said, excuse me? He said, good morning. I said, Tommy, where are you at? He said, I'm in South Korea. So what time is there? He said, 4 a.m. <laughs> you answered the phone? He said, yeah, my pastor called me. <laughs> no, 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 I just, I just want to talk. I just want to say hi. And we talked about 15, 20 minutes. And I thought, man, it's to have people that will answer the phone and appreciate your phone call. Give me my flowers now. Amen. Or you have out tithing off an envelopes in front of you. Hopefully you've already filled them out. I filled out my tithe check last week and forgot to give it. I said, Lord, let me live another week. I don't want to die with this check in my pocket. <laughs> Amen. So I made it another week. Love you guys. Pray your week's well. Thanks to all our guests for coming today. Amen. As we give today, we believe in God for? More money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money.
Bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns. That's the model. Royalties received. Favor? All righty, we have some announcements for you guys. Uh, big, important one. 